Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And in this video, I wanna talk about motivation. I talk about this in a lot of videos because people out there focus on who, like who they're gonna train with, for example, or where, like the gym or at home or whatever, then when, at what time is better, let's say in the night or during the morning, and of course what, what exercises they're gonna do or what exercises are best, like this one or that one. But the why, why are you doing it is always the most important question because it is the why that's going to get you to and through your workouts. Now everyone has a different reason as to why. Some want to look great in a bathing suit and some want to be a sports hero. Now my reason why is that I love to do stuff. I'm a doer. You want to play basketball, tennis, hockey, go running, biking, dancing, I don't know, scuba diving, skiing, whatever it is, I'm in. So this weekend, with no specific training and preparation, my buddy and I decided to run the Spartan Race, which is a race across brutal terrain filled with obstacles. And I know many of you are thinking, so what, Mike? Tons of people do that, and how at all is this motivational to me? Well, me running the race is not particularly motivational, but my friend here that is running alongside me has a very weakened heart, and he's got cancer. We ran this race on a Saturday, and here he is having chemo on a Thursday right before the race. Yep, you heard that right, he was having chemo on Thursday. And during this race, he taught me a huge lesson on motivation, and that lesson may be of use to you as well. So if you watch the entire video, you may learn a trick or two about keeping yourself motivated to achieve your goals, fitness related or for life in general. So let me first fill you in quickly on how we got here. My friend's name is Kirk, but everyone calls him by his nickname Fisk. And I met Fisk at the basketball court. I was a goofy kid looking to learn how to play basketball, and Kirk was one of the neighborhood guys who was a great athlete and who everybody knew. He's always been just a great guy who's generous with his time and always willing to help other people out, whether it's coaching kids football or teaching a goofy guy like me to play ball. And if you're a friend, there's nothing he won't do for you. A few years ago, he was walking to the train and he was feeling out of breath. He was in his mid-40s, but he wasn't in bad shape or anything. And at that point, he was about 210 pounds. Now just remember that this guy was over 200 pounds because I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Anyway, he was completely winded by simply walking over to the train and obviously something was terribly wrong. He went to see the doctor where they told him that his heart was weakened. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. But I would tell him exactly like what the exact diagnosis was of your... Uh... Oh, okay. Um, Cardiomyopathy. I'm not a doctor, but I think I said it right. <laughs> It's uh, an enlarged heart, uh, an enlarged, weakened heart. All right, don't know uh, why I got it, but um, doesn't really matter. I can say, why not me? You right. know. So you tell yeah. me exactly the the the, uh, the percentage that your heart was working at. Oh, um, yeah, I was working at twenty percent. Okay, at twenty percent, and I was like. They say the average guy is uh, 60. I'm like, damn, okay, that's, and look at me. I'm not, I'm not out of shape, but I couldn't well, even. You're, you're kind of out of shape. <laughs> okay, for me, I'm out of shape. <laughs> okay, yes, for me, I'm out of shape, but uh, yeah, functioning at 20%, okay. Thank you, it was weird, Mike, because like I said, I couldn't even walk to the train. He had a pacemaker and a defibrillator put in, and he was told to take it easy from then on. But then again, this is Fisk that we're talking about. He decided to do the exact opposite of what was advised, and he started to come to the gym with me, where he started to train like a boxer, and despite what his doctors and everyone around him expected him to do with his weakened heart condition, he actually got himself into better shape. He got into phenomenal shape and dropped down to 165 pounds, a new lean and mean Fisk. Now Fisk, like myself, is a doer, and that is also his motivation. His reason why he wanted to stay in shape, despite his ailing heart, was because he also loves to do stuff. On a moment's notice, you can always count on Fisk. Hey Fisk, you want to go jump out of a plane tomorrow? Sure, why not? What's the worst that could happen? This man, since having his heart problem, has driven across Canada by motorcycle. Twice! So even with his heart problem, he wasn't slowing down for a minute. He was just out there living his life. Fast forward to this October where he goes to the hospital for what he thinks will be a simple procedure in which he was supposed to have the battery changed on his pacemaker defibrillator. And there he gets hit with two pieces of bad news. One, you have blood clots on the wire of your defibrillator and they're gonna have to be removed. Oh, but two, we can't give you the blood thinners that we would normally like to to help you dissolve them because you have a form of leukemia and your platelets are minimal. 
And if you didn't know, leukemia is cancer of the blood. Now he was expecting to be in and out of the hospital for his battery in about a day. And little did he know he was about to spend the next six months in bed, barely able to move. Here is a pic that was taken at the Super Bowl at the beginning of February of this year, where Fisk couldn't even stand up. His weight fell to just over 100 pounds. And remember, this is a guy that used to be over 200 pounds. He definitely had a fight on his hands, but he kept fighting. After about six months in the hospital and a couple weeks at a rehab facility, he was allowed to go home on a Sunday and he was back in the gym Tuesday morning. He wasn't breaking any personal records, just doing one exercise at a time. Over the last couple of months, he's been training regularly because his motivation, his reason why now, is that he just wanted to feel like himself again. He just wanted to be able to go back to do what he was once able to do before. He just wanted to enjoy his life. The gym where he trains in Montreal is a great gym called Extreme Fitness. And the members there were gearing up to run the Spartan race this weekend. And on a whim on the Wednesday right before the race, I signed this up with their group. Again, keep in mind at one point this year, he couldn't stand up and he was at about 100 pounds. And he just had chemo on Thursday and he's about to do something that perfectly healthy people in their 20s perhaps can't do. A big shout out to the Spartan race. They were well organized and great. And the staff was just absolutely awesome with us. And here we are about to start the race. And I wasn't really sure exactly what we were getting ourselves into. Motivation. Remember, that's your reason why. Well, to tell you the truth that throughout your life, your reasons why are in constant flux and they change all the time. One day you're training to look great for the summer, for the beach, or to go on vacation. That right then and there is your reason why, or sometimes your reason why. Like my friend here, is simply to feel like yourself again, and to do the everyday things that most people take for granted. At one point they told Fisk that they were going to have to remove his spleen, and because of his weakened heart, his leukemia, and the low platelets, he was at a much higher risk of not surviving the surgery. I remember sitting with him in his hospital room the night before, and he says to me, you know, Mike, if I don't make it tomorrow, it was a pleasure knowing you. And I get all choked up and I don't know what to say. Except for you got this, Fisk. And this spring when you're out of here, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we got a whole bunch of stuff in store. And the whole time in my head, I know that this is wishful thinking. And I couldn't imagine sitting there in his shoes, knowing that your motivation right then and there is literally just to make it through the very next day. But thank God he did. And he was motivated. And his motivation evolved. At first he wanted to simply stand up on his own, and over the winter when everyone else was sleeping at night on the cancer ward, Fisk would sit up at the edge of his bed and then struggle to his feet, and exhausted he would sit right back down, and he would do one, and a couple of days later he would do two or three in a row, and then a week later he was up to about ten, and by mid-February he would say to me, let's go for a walk, and with a bunch of intravenous lines and bags attached to him, we would slowly walk the cancer ward one step at a time while everyone else was sleeping. Right then, his reason for pushing himself was that he wanted to walk on his own, and again, he did. By the end of February, he could walk a bit, but he couldn't go up or down any stairs. But he was motivated, because if he could do the stairs, then that meant that he could go home and be treated for cancer as an outpatient. And after spending a couple of weeks in a rehab facility in March, he was home by the very beginning of April. Then his motivation shifted once again. The reason why he was pushing himself now was that he wanted to be able to ride his motorcycle again. And just a couple of weeks ago, Fisk the Road Warrior was back on his bike and back out on the open road. And then almost jokingly, I told him, you know what would be epic is if you ran that race that they're all going to do from the gym. To which he smiled and said, sure. I'll do it. What's the worst that can happen? I've obviously heard of the Spartan race, but I hadn't actually seen it. I knew that there was obstacles that had to be completed, and that if you couldn't complete the obstacles, that you had to do 30 burpees. But that was about all I knew. I figured that if he couldn't do the obstacles, then he could just take his time and do a few burpees here and there, and then do a few more. I figured some obstacles he would make, and the ones he couldn't, we would do the burpees, which we did. But foolishly, I didn't take into account the terrain. The terrain, as you can see, was brutal. The obstacles was the easy part. The terrain was all uphill, mile after uphill mile. This was a guy that couldn't do a simple stair at the beginning of March. And here I was literally telling him to climb a mountain, muddy step after muddy step. He would walk a few paces up the mountain and rest a bit, and then walk a few more steps. And there he'd say, okay, Mike, just let me catch my breath now. And I looked at him with concern quite a few times and I said, Fisk, I'm sorry, man. I knew the obstacles might be tough, but this is hill after steep hill and they're so damn hard. And I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry. Let's call it, man. 
This is my bed and it's all on me. I'm telling you I want to throw in the towel. We have to quit. Let's quit. And he kept looking at me and saying, I'm not going to quit. Don't worry, Mike, we're gonna get there. Just like he had been fighting his heart problem and his cancer, he would fight this race one step at a time, just simply putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep going, just keep pushing. I learned a lot right there just by watching him. And this may help you as well. Now, I don't have cancer and I don't wanna belittle this at all. And you might not have cancer either, but when it comes to motivation, we often lose it because we overwhelm ourselves. We get so caught up in looking at the finish line and sometimes that finish line just seems so far away that we just give up and we quit. Like I wanted to throw in the towel and I wanted Fisk to quit. But you see, Fisk did not care about the finish line. That's gonna be what it's gonna be, he said. Maybe we'll make it, maybe we won't. But you see, I'm just trying to get to that tree right there. That's what I'm trying to do. And then when we got there, he rested. Then we're just trying to get to that flat level spot right up there. And then we rested another minute. He stayed motivated by not overwhelming himself, not thinking about how fast he could get to the finish line or how he would celebrate when it would all be over. Again, he didn't think of the finish line at all. He just kept taking it one foot in front of the other one step at a time. And sometimes on our journey during that race, he would just look back down the mountain and he'd say to me, Mike, you see how far we've come? We're gonna keep going. And he stayed motivated, not by looking forward towards the finish line, but by looking back down the mountain and reflecting on how hard he worked to get where he was. It was truly inspirational to me and he just kept pushing. And I began to see this race from his perspective. It was almost as if the race was a metaphor for the race that he'd been running for the past few years. The race against his heart, his cancer, and against time. He was used to it by now. Every time he got to a new summit where he thought that he could rest, that rest was short-lived because he would turn his head just to see another steep hill, another steep hill that had to be climbed. Now, it was tough and it was going to be a fight, but there is no way that he was going to quit. And I also noticed that he had grace under fire. And even though this battle was hard and it was dirty, the journey was still beautiful. If only for the briefest of moments if you take the time to look around and just take it all in. Now many people tell me that they're not in shape because they don't have the time, but really that's not all that true. The problem is that somewhere in the back of your mind you think you have too much time. Oh, you'll do it tomorrow, next week, or next month. That's when you'll get it done. But one day, like Fisk did, you're gonna realize that tomorrow is not always promised and that you're doing yourself a huge favor by making the time to stay as healthy as you possibly can. Even after we had realized that we reached the apex of the mountain and we were now on our way down, there were still obstacles to be conquered, more burpees to be done. But with each and every obstacle, we were getting closer and closer and that finish line was in sight. And I'm so proud to say that that's my friend there getting down and dirty, crawling under the barbed wire. And that's my friend pulling himself to go over another muddy hill. Finally, there's one last obstacle and it's a tough one. And I looked at it and I asked Fisk, this cargo net might be tricky. At this point, you're exhausted and it's kind of high. And he just smirks and says to me, I got this, I got this. And he did. And he makes it over the final obstacle literally crosses through the fire and over the finish line. Now, some people have their motivation of beating a personal goal or besting all the other races on the course. Fisk had the motivation of just returning to his former self, if only for the briefest of moments. Fisk just wanted to be Fisk again, that same guy who would take on any dare at a moment's notice. And he finished that race after a grueling five hours and 20 minutes. And you would think that after that, he would feel faint or sick. And so I asked him, Fisk, are you all right? How do you feel? And he just said, like me again, like me again. I just want to give one last big shout out to the Spartan race. Extremely well organized and done by great people. And for the people that ran the race, so many people took a moment out of their race to tell us to keep on trucking. And a very special thanks to the medics, the two Megans, who were so kind and positive and just kept an eye on us at the end of the race just in case. So here's what I learned about motivation during this race. Motivation, your reason why, is what will carry you when your feet get weary. And quite often, obstacles and hills will be tossed into your journey. They're gonna test your motivation and your resolve. So keep your reason why firmly in your mind's eye, but don't let it overwhelm you. And sometimes, like Fisk, don't be consumed with the finish line, but break down your overall goal into smaller ones and just keep pushing one step at a time. It may be hard and it may take time, but like Fisk, just keep putting one foot in front of the other and just don't give up because staying in the race, not quitting and continually striving is really the only way that you're ever gonna get where you wanna be. This has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And if you like these videos, then please click below to like or subscribe as we're constantly posting out great tips and new ideas that are meant to get you into the greatest shape possible.